in this video we will see how we can upgrade java for weblogic server so it looks very straightforward when we talk about the installation of java or upgrade of java okay just uh, download the installer and extract and then uh, uh, install it okay but this is not a standard practice okay when we are in a uh, production or professional environments okay so this is not the standard practice just to in, uh, just to uh, install with a default directory or just to extract with a default directory we have to follow certain standards for the production and for the live environments okay and for testing and development as well to avoid any unnecessary issues okay so we'll talk about that in this uh, session So first, how we can download uh, the Java, okay? So for Java installation, you have to download, extract, and install, okay? So for download, you have four options. If you have access for the uh, My Oracle support portal, then you have an ID with 1439821.1. From there, you can download. Second, you can go to adelivery.oracle.com. Third is java.com. And fourth is you can directly download from the oracle.com website as well, okay? And for window, there is an exe installer. You can download the exe and just run it, okay? And when we talk about the Unix-based systems, Linux, Ubuntu, and then all, okay, then you will get a zip installer for the Linux, for Unix-based systems, okay? And when you will extract that particular installer with unzip command, okay, you will get two installers there. One is uh, the in the RPM format, and second is just a tar format, okay? That is a, uh, in the zip format. Okay. So we'll see that how we can install uh, with the RPM and as well as with, with the tar gz command. Okay. So to install RPM installer, okay, you have to log in to the Linux as a root. Okay. And once you log into the root, you have to create a folder where you want to install Java. For example, you want to install Java in usr slash Java directory and create directory usr Java. Go inside that one with the help of cd command. Okay, and before installing the new uh, Java, okay, you can remove if any old version is there with the help of RPM hyphen E and then the existing package name. Okay, and once it is removed, you can install the new package or the new Java with the help of RPM hyphen IVH and the name of your RPM file. Okay, so this will install your RPM format of Java. And after that, you can delete your RPM file that you have downloaded okay, in your server. Now, second, if you have a zip installer, okay, then for that you have to use a tar command, okay, to unzip that particular file. So the format for that is tar hyphen xvf and the name of your tar file, okay. And then after that, once you will extract that particular tar file, okay, it will extract the folder with the current Java version, okay. For example, if we have downloaded the Java 180333. Okay, then it will create a folder with the same name JDK180333 inside your current folder. Okay, but one drawback when we say about that we are going with a default installation of Java, which create a folder with the name of version of Java. Okay, so suppose that tomorrow you are you are going to upgrade the Java and that tomorrow you come up with a version of 4C3. Okay, in that case, if your any of your script or any configuration file is pointing to the hard path of your Java older version, then you have to go and replace it everywhere. Okay, this is the common practices that we see in many environments where the default Java path is used. And then when we upgrade the Java, a lot of people get stuck there, okay, because they have to identify all the files, all the scripts, all the customization, wherever they have uh, imported this hard path, okay, and then they have to remove and then they have to change it everywhere. Because if you are going to uh, to download the new version of Java, like for example, 4C3, okay, it will come with a new folder name with JDK 180 underscore 4C3, okay. So when it is get changed, you have to change this path everywhere, okay. So to avoid such kind of a situation, okay, we, where you are going everywhere and find, uh, finding all the files, the scripts where you have your customized customizations, okay, uh, for the Java path, instead of that, you have to use a single standard path so that whenever you go for the upgrade of Java, you don't need to install or you don't need to modify any customization or escapes or configurations files. Okay, so we'll see that one, how we can go for that one. So there are two options for that one. The first one is that you have to create a symbolic link instead of the default folder name JDK180333. So what does it mean? You have to create a symbolic link. Symbolic link is a feature of your Linux, okay, or Unix-based operating systems, okay, 
that you can create with the ln command ln hyphen sf and the name of your current java folder and then the link that you want to create okay so if you can see the screen in, in the red mark okay my current java folder is jdk180333 okay now i want to point this standard folder to uh, another folder that is called opt java and jdk okay so now what i am doing what i am doing here is that instead of using the uh, the hard coded java path okay i am using a standard of for my java which is a jdk okay so now here you can see that opt java jdk will point to your jdk180333 okay so this will be a symbolic link okay so in case of any java upgrade extract new version remove existing link and then again point to new version folder okay so whenever you uh, if you if you are using a symbolic link okay and whenever you are going for the upgrade of your java you don't need to <clears throat> need to change any of your configuration files because your all of the configuration files customization script will use the path as opt java jdk okay so what you need to do is you need to install the new java and just you have to remove the existing soft link and then you have to create the new link with which will point to your new java folder okay how we can do this is for example your existing uh, java version is 180333 and for that you have created a symbolic link opt java jdk that means opt java jdk so this jdk is just a symbolic link which is pointing to 180333 and now you wanted to upgrade java with the version 180433 okay so it's very straightforward you have to just download and extract and unzip the new java version 180443 inside the same folder where you have older version of java 333 okay once you have extracted just unlink or remove the old java jdk link with the help of unlink or maybe with the help of rm command unlink jdk or rm jdk it will remove the symbolic link and then again you can create a new symbolic link which will be point to your new java folder which you have extracted so you can create that with ln hyphen sf or jdk180433 and then space and then jdk so now what will happen is that here you will again create a new symbolic link with the same name jdk which will now point to your new java folder which is 433 okay so now because you have defined your uh, this java path in all of your configuration steps and customization as opt java jdk so you don't need to edit or find any of the configuration files you have to just extract the new java folder okay then remove the existing symbolic link and create again the same symbolic link pointing to your new java folder okay however this is not supported configuration from the oracle but in many of the production and in many of the test or development even in environments okay you will see this kind of a configurations for your java okay now when we talk about the option 2 okay so it is again same as option 1 but only difference is that you don't need to create any symbolic link use the same standard of the folder opt java and jdk okay and instead of creating a symbolic link you can just copy paste all of your contents from the java folder to inside the jdk okay so what does it mean create a folder opt java and jdk okay and then you have to extract or install your current java okay and then all the contents which will be inside your default directory of java you have to copy paste that inside the jdk right so that means if suppose that i would like to install now a 433 version of java okay so i will i will download and extract this one and after extracting i will copy all the contents which is there inside the 433 folder to opt java and jdk okay so to upgrade when we are going for upgrade is very straight forward and simple download and extract the new java folder for example 433 okay you can take the backup of existing java make sure whenever you are going for the upgrade or any kind of a configuration changes you must have to take the backup of the particular file that you are going to update or if you are going to upgrade your complete java then take the backup of your older folder okay with set some name naming convention okay now once you have taken the backup of your existing java okay then again suppose that you have a existing folder uh, jdk folder with name opt java and jdk then you can take a backup of that with like name jdk333 and again create a folder with name jdk okay now move all the contents from the new java folder inside your jdk folder okay so in the last command where i am moving the content one uh, jdk folder is missing there so move jdk 180433 slash star to slash opt java and jdk because we are using the jdk so that is a typo that is missing there 
right? So now all the current Java files will be inside your JDK folder. So now what is the difference between option one and option two is that in option one, we have used the same folder structure of it, Java JDK, which we are using in option two as well. But in option one, we were creating the symbolic link Okay, which was uh, which link was pointing to your Java folder, and in option two, instead of creating a link, what we are doing is that we are just extracting the new Java folder, and then we are moving all the contents from inside of the Java folder to your JDK folder. So now again, you are all the configuration files and then scripts customizations are using the OPT Java and JDK path. So you don't need to update any other configuration file in case of the Java upgrade. You just need to extract your Java folder for the current update. Okay, and then copy the content inside JDK if you're using option two. And if you're using option one, just drop the existing symbolic link and create the new symbolic link, which will take a couple of seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. so these are the two standard methods for upgrading and installing Java as well. And when you are upgrading Java, then make sure to copy mentioned three files inside your current Java folder. Okay. So CSRs, Java.security, and Java.policy. Okay, so CS cert is your def default trusted store for certificates that come with the Java. Okay, so most of the time in the uh, in, in your uh, live environment or maybe in your production on non-production environment, okay, all the certificates from the client sites are copied or imported inside your CS certs. Okay, so if you are installing a new JDK which will come with a new CS certs, then your certificates will be missing from the CS certs and your client may get certain SSL kind of exceptions, okay? So whenever you are upgrading your Java, make sure to copy all these three files, CS certs, java.security and java.policy from the backup of your older version of Java to the new version of Java and the location is JDK installation folder, then JRE lib and security. So in my case, I have installed Java in OPT Java JDK Okay, so inside JDK, there is a folder called JRE and then lib and then security. So what I will do after the upgrade of Java, I will go back to my old backup directory. Inside security, I will take the copy of all these files and then I will copy in the new Java folder. Okay, so these are the standard practices for Java installation upgrade and uh, thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos. Thank you very much.